What's up guys, my name is Brandon and I've been running iOS 13.5 on all of my devices for over a week now and I wanted to give you guys a follow up on the software. So we're going to talk about the performance, the battery life, the bugs, including the VPN bug, which a lot of people have been asking about and also why this update in particular is so, so important to update to. And before I get any further into the video, yes, a jailbreak for iOS 13.5 was just recently released. Now I will not be making a tutorial video on this, but if you guys requested enough, like in the comments and you know on Twitter and things like that, I might make a top tweaks video showing the best tweaks and themes to install with that 13.5 jailbreak. So if you guys are still interested, let me know in a comment below. But anyways, back to iOS 13.5 as a whole. So like I mentioned, I've been using this on my iPhone 11 Pro Max, my iPhone SE 2020. I've been using it on my iPad Pro 2020 and also my iPhone 8 Plus. And so far, pretty much everything is great. It's almost perfect. Now, I don't really have any complaints but there are a few things that need to be addressed. And the first one is going to be the application bug that would not allow users to open recently updated applications. And it would give you the message that says this, this app is no longer shared with you. So I got tons of questions about this over on Twitter. I saw this a lot on Reddit and things like that. And Apple actually acknowledged that this was an issue and fixed it a few days ago, but they didn't actually say what caused it specifically. But if you were wondering why you had a ton of pending app store updates, like in your app store, that's why i mean there was a lot of updates i got like over 100 updates on my device right here and if you just go in here you'll see a lot of these just recently got updated so it was because of that bug and i don't think it was actually 13.5 only i believe it was a server side issue with apple uh, but there's again been no confirmation from apple on exactly what caused this bug but it has since been fixed. So now let's talk about the COVID-19 contact tracing. What states are allowing it? When we can expect to finally see the apps made to utilize this new API and this new feature and things like that. So first off, as I mentioned in my initial what's new video, not every US state is going to allow this contact tracing feature. And 9to5Mac actually made a list showing which states are and are not using Apple's exposure notification API. Basically, they're either opting in or opting out or giving just no response. And on this list, you can see that only four of 50 states are currently participating, and that's lower than I expected, but there are a lot of other states undetermined on the list. Uh, so there are also some states, of course, as you can see here, that will not be participating. They've already said no, they're not gonna participate in this for whatever reason, but it'll be interesting to see you know how this progresses over time especially when the exposure notification applications get released in other states and other countries but as of the time of recording this on may 27th only four out of 50 u.s states are currently participating in this and speaking of the exposure notification apps switzerland was actually the first to release a covid 19 application using the exposure notification api from apple and google and the application is called swiss covid and it's currently only available to members of the Swiss Army, hospital workers, and civil servants on both iOS and Android. And according to BBC, a wider rollout is planned, but members of the parliament must approve the application before it's widely released to pretty much everybody. But meanwhile, in Latvia, approval is not required. So their application could be out as soon as tomorrow, and that will be the second one out in the world. Now, the report also says that Apple has approved their application to appear in the App Store already. So it seems like that will be released. But of course, this is not in the US. I know most of you guys are you know, in the US and Canada, but as of right now, we don't have any you know, confirmation or any reports saying that an application is coming you know, within this week. So we'll have to wait on that. And I will, of course, let you guys know when we know anything as far as applications in the States. But this is super interesting. And I'm curious to see how this plays out over the coming months. And I'm also curious to see which US state gets an application out first. So let me know your thoughts on all of this. I think it's pretty interesting. Some people won't care, but I'm just pretty interested to see how this is going to progress over time. So now let's move on to something I've been receiving a lot of questions about ever since iOS 13.5 released, and that is the VPN bug. So this is a bug or really a vulnerability that was first published by Proton VPN, a company when 13.4 came out, and it's a pretty scary one. Basically the bug just simply does not encrypt all of your data when you have your VPN enabled and on. It doesn't encrypt all of your traffic, which can be pretty scary if you have like confidential or just really important personal information that you're dealing with on your device. And since a lot of us use VPNs for a multitude of different reasons and scenarios, this is pretty alarming. And unfortunately, it looks like Apple has still 
not been able to fix this bug. Apple just posted these security patches included with iOS 13.5 a whole week after the release of the software, which is a bit unusual. They usually post it like the next day or a few days after. But anyways, included in this are tons of bugs and vulnerabilities, including kernel vulnerabilities, WebKit bugs, Bluetooth bugs, AirDrop bugs, and you know FaceTime, several more. And this really just hits home how important of an update iOS 13.5 is. I mean, pretty much every update that has you know bugs listed in the security contents that Apple publishes is important, but there are a ton in iOS 13.5, a lot, especially kernel vulnerabilities, which is kind of surprising. But what you'll notice when looking through this list is no mention of VPN, no virtual private network, you know, mentioned anywhere. And also ProtonVPN has not updated their article about this issue either. So that also further indicates that this still has not been resolved. So my suggestion is pretty simple. Just do not use a VPN for the time being. If you are dealing with confidential or very personal information, use it on your computer. If you're gonna, you know, use a VPN at all, don't use it on your iPhone for the time being. So yes, the VPN vulnerability is still there. However, when you look through the list of CVEs on this list, you're gonna see a lot of startling vulnerabilities and bugs that likely have been exploited out in the wild. I mean, there's no confirmation of that, but you would have to assume that at least some of them have. Now, some of these include this audio one right here where it says processing a maliciously crafted audio file may lead to arbitrary code execution. There's a Bluetooth vulnerability here that says that it can allow an attacker in a privileged network position to intercept Bluetooth traffic. There's a WebKit bug that quote, processing maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution and just several others that people on iOS 13.4.1 and below are still vulnerable to. So this is a big reason to update, but an even greater reason is the fact that you can also jailbreak on iOS 13.5. So really there's no reason at all not to update to iOS 13.5, especially since the update after 13.5, 13.5.1 is what I'm gonna presume it's gonna be, will likely patch the vulnerability and you know, you're not gonna be able to jailbreak 13.5.1. So it seems like right now, iOS 13.5 for really every reason in the book is the software you want to be on. But anyways, moving on to more of the software, more of the actual follow-up review section of this video, I wanted to mention the text message bug. So some people reported that the text message bug has come back where they basically don't get notifications. But fortunately for me and for most people, 99% of people, that is not an issue. So luckily you guys know I struggled with that for a while, but that did not come back. I'm still currently getting all my text message notifications. I'm getting the alerts, the sounds, the notifications, everything. So thankfully, that did not come back. Also, mail is running just fine for me on iOS 13.5, which is kind of surprising. Uh, I haven't had issues recently, but a lot of people said they were having issues in 13.4.1 and 13.5, but mail has been perfectly fine for me. I've not needed to go to a third-party mail client. And as far as overall performance goes, performance is absolutely excellent on 13.5. Everything is running perfectly fine for me on all my devices, and it seems like my iPhone 8 Plus actually saw the biggest improvement in terms of performance. And of course, I was coming from 13.4.1 on this device, but it seems like the multitasking and just when I played games and things like that, everything just seemed smoother and more fluid on 13.5 on the iPhone 8 Plus. So that's a really good sign for those of you on the iPhone 8 Plus. I've heard similar from the iPhone 7 Plus, although I've not got around to updating my iPhone 7 Plus to 13.5 yet, but that is good news for those of you on the older devices. And as far as battery life goes, battery life is the same as 13.4.1 to me, but it did improve a bit on my iPad Pro, my 2020 iPad Pro up here. And that's likely because this is a newer product and Apple is just still continuing to optimize the device in terms of battery life and performance. And so I did notice a slight bump and battery life on the iPad Pro. I also saw a lot of users on the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8 report great battery life on 13.5. And if we take a look at the charts on my daily driver here, my iPhone 11 Pro Max, if we go to my settings and go to battery, you'll see that I do use my phone quite a bit. I've been using it quite a bit lately over the last 10 days. So you can see there I'm averaging about 12 hours of screen on time. So a lot of time spent on my phone and you can see the battery stats and everything right there. But overall, it's really the same as 13.4.1 to me. But of course that will depend on your habits. You can see my battery health is at 96%. I do also use optimized battery charging 
and I plug my phone in overnight every single night. I leave it plugged in all the way until I wake up. And once again, I have no complaints. And I've also read that a lot of you guys that are using the iPhone 6S and the iPhone 7 are also reporting great improved battery life from 13.4.1. And as far as cell connectivity goes, I've had no issues at all with cell connectivity. As far as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth goes, also no complaints. So I actually use Bluetooth a lot more now than I ever did before since I just recently got a Tesla. If you guys saw my Instagram post, you would know that but I'm using Bluetooth now for my audio streaming and my phone calls. So I'm gonna have a lot more feedback to share with you guys in terms of Bluetooth performance. Whereas before I would just plug my phone in and use CarPlay and I would not really use Bluetooth too often. So that's good news if you do use Bluetooth and you're curious about you know, how software updates impact the Bluetooth performance. Now, as for your guys' feedback on iOS 13.5, I did run a poll on the community tab here on my channel. I was pretty late. This was just about an hour ago, but it still got almost 2000 votes within that one hour. So I said, how has iOS 13.5 been for you? Also, what device are you using? And you could see a staggering 44% said, excellent, no bug. So once again, that coincides with everything I've been receiving and basically everything I've said in this video, iOS 13.5 is excellent for most people. And as far as the comments you guys left, you can see the top comment right now is that it seems like the battery life has improved significantly. So I would say that it's a pretty good update. So he doesn't mention what device he's using, but you know, some people do seem to agree there that battery life has improved. And you can also see here, Nikki says that I'm using the iPhone 7 and iOS 13.5 is running great so far. The overheating issue has been fixed for me and my battery finally doesn't drain anymore. However, there is one bug I'm experiencing sometimes and that's where I can't delete a recent notification from the notification center when my phone is locked. I have to unlock my phone first before I can delete that notification. So I've not had that, but once again, here's somebody with an iPhone 7 saying that the performance and battery life are better and apparently an overheating issue has been fixed as well. We have Joe here saying that FaceTime calls aren't working. That's probably just something to do with your settings. That's likely not an issue with 13.5 itself because I've not seen anybody else mention that. Francisco says here that he cannot see the download tab on Apple Music and it's marked as shown. So not really sure. Maybe you guys have had that issue. I've not run into any issues at all with music on 13.5. So yeah, as you can read a lot of good feedback as far as iOS 13.5 goes on pretty much every device, there's a good you know selection of different devices in there and most people have great things to say about this update. So all in all, iOS 13.5 is a super important update in regards to security since it does patch up so many bugs and vulnerabilities. And once again, if you want to jailbreak, iOS 13.5 is also the place to be since the next update, which is again, likely 13.5.1, it's likely going to patch that jailbreak. So yes, I think that pretty much everybody should update. I really cannot find any reason at all for somebody not to update to 13.5. And once again, if you guys wanna see like a top tweaks video in iOS 13.5, let me know. I still am on the fence about doing that video. Of course, my channel is never going to be geared towards jailbreaking specifically again. I'm more doing, you know, stuff like this, software updates and, you know, hardware reviews and things like that. But I may sprinkle in a little bit of jailbreak content if you guys still want that in 2020 and moving forward. So just let me know. And you can also reach out to me over on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are also down in the description below. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.